Radiant okay then, back. so welcome back everybody, you're watching Star Series Season 11, this is the European Division, my name is Triumph of Man, I'll be casting this match, four anchors, Trixie's Dyer boys up ban. against Team Is Secret, now I say Tricky's, Trixie's boys, technically it's Matumba Man's boys, it's Matum, Matumba Man, oh Jesus Christ, Matumba Man, he is actually the captain, I asked him what is the relationship between the anchors and the captain, who's the, who is the captain, who are the anchors, remaining. apparently it's Matumba Man, he is in fact training to be a captain. Everybody else Five is just an anchor around remaining. him and tries to carry them. But as it is, Wiss banned out first by four anchors, keeping that away from Big Daddy no And Ember Spirit, on the other hand, first banned by Team is Secret. Okay, Secret decided to get rid of the Embers first. That's is interesting. I don't... Like, Ember's good, you know, no doubt about it, but he has some obvious counters and heroes that he hates playing against. He's not that frequently first banned. Yeah. Although then again, kind of keep... <laughs> Dire Again, team pick. I've seen some pretty mean four anchor Ember Spirit games, so respect man, I guess. Slark also banned out there. And we will also have Brewmaster banned by four anchors. Now, Ogre, he's been getting first picked a lot recently, and this is kind of his last hurrah, I think, his first picked material. His stun, if you hate the Ogre, I do hate the Ogre as well. His stun is getting nerfed next patch. It Radiant is the cast range pick. is going down to something awful 300, 350, something like that. It's pretty bad. If you think of the uh, the stun range on Slider, it's roughly around about that. It's not very long at all. So, if you hate Ogre, rejoice. The nerfs are indeed coming. But Elder Titan will be the first pickup here. Now, this does cause some issues for Secret. It means that they've got to watch which areas they pick towards the carry, like which carries they pick. Some carries really do not like going up against ET, particularly because it's they lose all their armor. Uh, heroes like Morphling, Terrorblade, even don't particularly like Five it at all. A lot of their remaining. armor just goes out the window. They become suddenly very, very squishy. And there's a lot of time. fun burst lineups that you could do with ET as well. But the double pick now for Secret. We'll see what their counter plan is here. If they wanted to, they could go for an early bat rider, but I don't think they will. They're going to grab the VS. I mean, this, if they do want a bat, well, the VS pickup means it opens up the bat for them. But also, it's just a good defensive first pick as a support. Just really limits the opponent's picks. It means they can't really go towards bat rider. Void is less desirable. And it just gives you the option to play around with certain cores that don't really or often are basically a focus fire targets in the middle of early fights stuff like death prophet obviously although death prophet actually i'll give us a special mention also i really like venture spirit with puck these days argonim's puck remaining. is insanely good and when you can force those snaps on the coil, Reserve it time. really wrecks people i love it it is a fantastic little combo puck. and really help and there we go puck is picked up it's for Puck, pick. as we know, million dollar coils. But yeah, you basically, you throw the coil down with the eggs, and then you go, well, not only do you displace the hero into an awful position, away from his probably trapped, also called up teammates, but you also land this freaking 4.5 second stun in his face. It's like getting whacked by an arrow from Mirana. It is really, really crippling. So you swap someone into a terrible position, you might lose the VS still, but hey, you know what? She's done her job. You pick somebody off, they get the, you pick a priority remaining. target off, it's very much worthwhile. Four anchors now with their Five response. Seconds remaining. You know what's funny? Scarath Mage. There we go. Scarath Mage. I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Scarath Mage and ETO. Like I said, you want some burst magic lineups. Hey, get rid of their magic resistance and then amplify the damage by like 40%. That creates tears. And also, Scarath Mage against Puck. I mean, that's a way to make S4 flip the table in rage because Puck does not Ten like getting seconds. silenced. <laughs> he really does not like having the damage amplified while he's being silenced at the same time. Five he's a very squishy hero that relies remaining. on his elusiveness to stay alive in fights. And if you were watching earlier tonight, you would have seen some absolute shenanigans Reserve time. with... Uh, t -t -t oh, what was his name? It completely escapes me now. Minuts. Minuts was... I'm pretty sure it was Minuts playing the Puck. Minuts was all over the show with Puck. I think he had a, like a 50 second, 50 second juke Radiant sequence where he was bang. dodging four heroes, running around in the trees, dodging everybody with his various blinks and disjoints and phase shifts. It was absolutely spectacular. But you shut that down with a silence. One good silence and suddenly Puck just falls apart really, really quickly. Anyway, Flyer can continue with the bands. Remaining. Get rid of the Naga Siren. Thank Christ. Pick that Five off straight away. Remaining. Secret though, we'll see where they're going. Will you get Kurakai with? And by the way, Reserve it is pronounced time. Kurakai. I know somebody in this chat's going to start yelling, "It's Kuriki! It's Kuriki! What's wrong with you?" No, it's actually pronounced Kurakai. Although Kuro has said he doesn't actually care how you pronounce it. Now third ban here for Secret. 
Elder Titan could be an offlane, could be a support, both work. And if you're going for full on magical burst, Centaur is amazing. Is absolutely amazing with Skype Mage, and it just gets even meaner with ET Spirit as well. So we'll see though. I mean that's I think I feel that's like ban worthy material, but they might just let that fly. Oh, I should also mention that, uh, yeah, if you haven't noticed, Misery is also standing in, as I've just realized I'm retarded and I need to switch things. There we go. <laughs> switch that over. But, yeah, Misery is standing in for Fly. Well, Simba, as he likes to be called now. Ban. He's on vacation, I hear, although apparently he's disappeared off the roster, so I don't know. Shenanigans. But they will ban out the Viper. I think it's a solid plan. They might actually ban the Razor. Puck also... Puck does not like playing against Viper. Viper's Ten a bit rough for Puck to go remaining. up against because the harass, obviously, from Viper is quite strong. And Puck, when he's trying to trade hits, corrosive, the remaining. corrosive skin is pretty annoying and also allows Viper to basically avoid a lot of Puck's burst in the lane and range harass Radiant as well. Razor is almost as bad. It's pretty rough. Uh, basically, the static link is very annoying to play against. And also Puck, if he messes up, the, if you pump the fake right and basically cause him to phase shift wrong, he gets whacked by a very long range plasma field and that really hurts Puck, Ten especially early on. Remaining. But... Five seconds remaining. And the other issue is Puck also doesn't have that much burst. He can't really solo or kill the Razor very easily, so it's Reserve not time. a case of where he can just basically orb and jump the Razor with Waning Rift. If he tries to jump the Razor, Razor basically links him up and says, well, you know what? You're going to come in here, you'll do a lot of damage, but then you won't finish me, and I will drain so Radiant much damage and wreck pick. you in return. It's pretty it's pretty void. difficult to play against. Now, Secret will pick Dyer up the face of I think that's actually, A, it's a solid pick. It's a really good pick. Also, it keeps it away from the Skyrath Mage being comboed up there because, like we said, ET can be a Radiant support. So they could just pick, pick up Faces Void to play in the offlane as well. And dumping Mystic Flares into Chronospheres is the quickest way to make people sad and very angry with you. But four anchors ban at the Drow. And when you've got the, the Drow and the VS Auras really, really strong together, they cause so much damage. They can make, as well, if you've got the Range Harass as well, Coming out during the laning phase, with well, that just a bonus damage from the precision or it's really, really quite painful to play against the lane against. Remaining. Phantom Assassin though picked up by four anchors, so five uh, seconds remaining. They don't have full on synergy there with the Skyrath Mage, but you know what? Reserve time. When you start whacking someone who has no armor because ET dropped an aura on them, that's pretty hilarious. It makes for some really mean crits. And it's just basically burst damage. It's a burst damage factor. Now, I wonder if they might ban the Ogre, because Phantom Assassin really does quite well with the Ogre partner. Obviously, again, Ogre multicast with Natural Order and <laughs> Ancient Seal really makes people quite Ten angry. Seconds remaining. So I wonder if Secret might ban the Ogre with their last pick there, because I'm Five thinking this is looking remaining. like an offlane Elder Titan. As the next pick here for Secret, wow, pick. there is some team fight there indeed. Now we've got some ganking burst potential there from Four Anchors, but... On the other hand, they will be fighting into a black hole, a chronosphere, and a dream coil. Yeah, that's not something you want to fight into. That's like that's a really, really scary prospect to go up against. They also don't have a really good answer to like they don't have the the solid answer like eventual spirit to the enigma. Enigma playing against a VS, it's very difficult for him to Ten basically find a really remaining. good black hole. It's actually next to impossible to VS once she hits level eleven. Level five seconds level one ult, not so hot. Yeah, it's still plausible, but after that, uh, le once he gets level two and higher, it's pretty Reserve difficult to find time. a black hole even with a blink. As long as VS is waiting in the wings and ready to go for it, she'll be able to cancel that very easily. But right now, Four Anchors are lacking something. It's just basically full-on teamfight AoE CC, which Secret have in spades at the moment. But Four Anchors, well, they've got a lot of burst, and they'll be definitely good in the ganks and the picking off people and just finding priority targets and bursting them down. But if in a full-on 5-on-5, Dreamcore, Chronosphere, and Black Hole, very hard to argue with. And the question is, also I'm wondering, if this is a solo mid Phantom Assassin, she can... Phantom says, like, she won't be able to chase the Puck out. I'm assuming this is a solo mid S4 Puck. She won't be able to chase him out of the lane. It'd be quite difficult for him to manage that. But at the same time, she can still see us relatively well with a dagger. It's pretty hard to shut down the farm for Phantom Assassin. It is, unless you've got, like, a really aggravating support reaming on her, like, Scarlet Mage, or even just a one-on-one -on -one with Scarlet Mage and Phantom Assassin is pretty mean. But yeah, it's very hard to stop her. And also, it's just Puck doesn't have enough burst really to bring down quickly and his range harass is decent but not as good as it could be because blur is yeah blur is annoying 10 seconds remaining 
five seconds. Uh, both remaining. teams pretty much out of reserve time. As unless four anchors have crashed, oh, they, oh, no, just one second left. Radiant Ruby picked up. Bank. I mean, if you're gonna steal spells, hey, why not steal Black Coal, Chronosphere, or Drink Call? It's just pretty much Rubik can't get a crappy spell here. They're all really good, all amazing spells. Right? Except maybe conversion is a bit, yeah, whatever. But otherwise, Wave of Terror is fantastic. Ten Magic Missile remaining. Swap Polar Puck spells are really nice as well. Hard to get a bad one. Five seconds Even Time Warp remaining. is great. Like Rubik with mobility is insanely, insanely Dire threatening. Axe ban. will be the final ban here from Secret. Four anchors. We'll see what their final ban is. This does leave them open. I feel like they would really enjoy... Like, they can't... Uh, the Rubik's picked up. I think this is sort of an answer to basically the team fight power. Like, Ten oh, they're like... Remaining. Forrest's like, okay, well, we need some team fight. We don't really have a good Five option to draft. Remaining. Although they could have gone with the Sand King, actually. Sand King would have been pretty damn good. Sam King combos amazing with Scarlet Mansion again follows up with Eltar they're like you know what well pick. they've got their big AOE CC so let's just steal it let's, let's use Rubik and Rubik definitely in the lane a lot stronger than the Sand King Sand King is very good mobile ganking has a good plan B you can farm the jungle also this business like that but it comes down to trading hits with supports in the lane not as good as a Rubik Brewmother the final ban here for four anchors and we'll pick that off there and yeah, looking at their lineup, they do not have the wave gear. Like Ruby, uh, obviously Skyth Mage, amazing at harassing Ten a lot of heroes out of the lane. But one of the ones he doesn't really deal with very well, obviously Brewmother. She just swarms with spy links. He gets very, very unhappy. Dire now Secret will finalize their pick here. Off lane Doom look by the looks of Faces Void, Safe Lane Farm, backed up by Ventral Spirit Enigma. I mean, I'm looking at this lineup here from Four Anchors. They could get if they wanted to, it's plausible they take an offensive try and just shut down Void's farm. It'll still be difficult because, they're, again, they're playing into really powerful ults like Doom, Black... Oh, yeah, just team fighting against Doom, Black Hole, Chronosphere, and Dream Coil. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, Rubik's going to have to work overtime. <laughs> I mean, at the very least, if he stro steals Chronosphere. Five seconds remaining. As, like, Chronosphere is probably the easiest one of these spells to steal. Steal Chronosphere, dump it down, Five watch Skyrath Mage and Elton Titan blow people up. Like, if he lands a good Chrono, it's just a guaranteed Earth Splitter and Mystic Flare. And that will basically destroy people. Templar Assassin, though, the final pick here for four anchors. And the solemn mid answer, it seems, to Puck. So probably a Phantom Assassin in the safe lane. Okay. Switch that over. Uh, Phantom Assassin, uh, Templar Assassin against the Puck. That's, yeah, that's pretty solid for Templar Assassin. That's not a great matchup for Puck. The silence is nice against her if you can get on top of her before she can refract. But Puck, harassing the lane, largely relies on that so that those new kits, which Templar Assassin deals with extremely well. And she can also trade hits very easily with the Psyblades. It can be difficult for Puck. And Puck can't really out CS against the extra damage from Refraction. So this seconds. will be an interesting matchup. Remaining. But of course, S4, one of the best in the business when it comes to playing Puck. So five seconds remaining. we'll see how this one turns out. But I've got to say, I feel like I feel like it's a very solid pick. On the other hand, it's fairly... Actually, no, you know what? Their lineup's pretty bursty. Aside from, say, some of the dots there from Doom. Yeah, or if they get Eidolons on top of Templar Prepare Assassin. Yeah, their the lineup is pretty bursty. Templar Assassin should do fairly well in this one. Anyway, so caught the lineups here. Playing for Secret on the Radiant side. We've got Puppy playing the VS. Ah, wow, okay. Puppy playing the VS. No Tail playing the Enigma. S4 playing the Puck. Kuriko on the Doom. Oh, they swapped, actually, by playing the Faceless Void before. Anyway, so Kuriko's actually going to safe lane the Doom, it seems. And Misery has swapped over to the Faceless Void for the offlane. Interesting that uh, Puppy not actually playing the Enigma. Anyway... For the Dire team, playing for four anchors, we've got Ru Jirax playing the Rubik, Vilex playing the Templar Assassin, Boogie playing the Skyrath Mage, Trixie playing Elder Titan, please don't feed Trixie, and Matumba Man playing the Phantom Assassin. And it looks like this is going to be an offensive trial, and this is going to be rough. Indeed, this is going to be pretty difficult, actually. Kuroko does not deal... Like, Doom really kind of sucks with early harass. At least he's bought a ring. He bought the ring of protection that's going to help him out, plus the shield. So he's going to be okay. If he was expecting a safe lane, like a relatively easy lane to farm, he would have been in a lot of trouble if he bought up just a lot of regen. Because no armor and no block means <laughs> the amount of harassment... This is still going to be rough, though. But from two range heroes, the amount of harassment he would take would be absolutely obnoxious. But I'm expecting Scarf Mage to come bottom. And he's going to head down bottom. And pretty much Doom is going to struggle to get a whole lot of farm because he's going to get harassed down the lane very quickly by Arcane Bolts. And there's only so much to VS. Here. VS is going to struggle to trade hits because she's much shorter range than both the Rubik and the Scarath Mage, so it's going to be pretty damn rough. 
Although I say that, and Jirax is headed top. I think he's just warding, though. Oh, never mind. No, it's not going to be an offensive try. Matumba Man... I think Matumba Man's just going to assist... Actually, no, I have no idea why Matumba Man's down here. They've got Trixie and Matumba Man on the bottom line. Neither of them appear to be warding or doing any sort of that business. Maybe they're just deciding where they want to place their lanes at the moment. It's possible that they decide to move Trixie in a moment once they see what the lanes are. But the thing is... The issue with picking a jungler is, yes, you do increase your gold gain. You're tapping more sources of income for both experience and gold. The issue is, though, you weaken your lanes. And also, for most jung for many junglers, in fact, you weaken your ganking response as well. Couple can do very well. Obviously, you get a smoke ganking with Chen or Enchantress. You can quite easily gank a hero with the right creep. But for Enigma, not so much. He needs to get Eidolons in the right position. Eidolons are very slow. He often doesn't have any mana because he's been spamming the conversion, so he doesn't really have enough to... If he does go out for a low-level Maledict, it's... Uh, Malifus, sorry. It is generally... It eats up a lot of his mana and slows down his jungle, so he's not very active usually as a, as a ganker. And that leaves Secret with a very weak bottom lane. So if four anchors spot this, they might just try and capitalize on it and try and shut him down. They could actually do it with a dual lane. I mean, they could actually just quite easily say, Madhama Man, go top, farm top, and then just dual lane. Because the Scarth Mage alone is going to make life incredibly painful for these two heroes to deal with. Between the spirit being dropped to harass from a long range, just the much longer range harass there from Scarth Mage, it's going to be very difficult. And this will actually, this will free up Rubik as well to get mobile and cause ganks. But at the same time, if Rubik comes bottom, this also means that whenever they gain some kind of advantage in the lane, they say they push them under the tower, this frees up Rubik and the Scarth Mage to go look for no tower and cause issues in the jungle. Either just at least sap experience and gold there, if they can last hit a few things out from underneath them, slow them down a bit, or even just flat out get a gank because... Especially since Enigmas often rush the Soul Ring, they can find themselves very low and quite vulnerable to getting picked off. Boogie, I hope, I hope you're happy, Boogie. You're making the chat right. Chat's riding hard right now. But looking at these lineups here... Void is dead. I really like it's hard. It's this really hard. Like at the same time, they've got some really good carry in the form of Phantom Assassin late game. People are like the double assassins late game, plus the fact that uh, Void's not going to have much armor unless Doom is providing some bonuses. It's going to be pretty hard for Secret to meet head on, but at the same time, Secret have so much team fighting power. Like their alts are amazing. It's really hard to call. I feel like with like with execution, I feel like with the execution side of things, four anchors have a much harder game ahead of them because they have to basically get picture perfect, disables down on the right targets at the right moment, and focus fire the right targets together. Whereas Secret's lineup is, I'm not trying to make fun of it, but it's much much simpler. It's basically hit R, win game. Though obviously some are harder, black holes is much more difficult to place correctly, but at the same time, doom this guy. Play circle with Chronosphere so it lands on enemies and not friendlies. You know, they kind of play, like, those alts sort of play themselves in comparison. Although I say that and then we've got alts like Phantom Assassin, which is like, <laughs> hit people until you get crits, so in fairness, but yeah, there is that, but you get what I mean. Just, if you throw enough alts, the Secret have the lineup where if you throw enough alts at the wall, something's going to stick and people are going to fall over dead. Or at least not move for like 10 seconds. I mean, you land a Chronosphere and a Black Hole together, <laughs> like one after the other. Secret aren't going any like, four anchors won't be going anywhere particularly quickly. They'll be stuck at a lot of chain CC. I don't really have a huge counter to it either. That's probably the other issue. 30 seconds to battle. I think the main issue here is uh oh, no tail. Gonna come out here and Trixie. Trixie! Runs between four heroes and avoids managing to feed. That's actually a pretty commendable effort considering he tricks his usual shenanigans. Oh boy. But he will be picking up a soul ring first. The question is what they're going to do with the support. So, looks like they're going to have PA solo the top lane. Which, against the Void, that's the definitely doable. Begins. Coming down, it's going to come down to the RNGG, really. How many bashes is Void crop? Meanwhile, looks like Doom going to cop some hits there. Titan will find the regeneration rune. But yeah, this is going to be a battle top worth of, you know, this is going to be RNGG pretty hard. Does PA blur more than Void backtracks? I don't know, we'll find out. 
this bottom lane. No, here's actually, they are actually going to send Jirax top. So I think they figured, they've looked at the lane and said, all right, well, with the jungle and Nemo, we can probably just get away with a support Skyrath in the bottom lane. Just harass the Doom out of the lane. And Doom might actually just go on jungle. Because playing, a, might not even full jungle. You might just, yeah, he's just going to grab one creep now. And you might have, no, he's just going to jungle flat out, which I don't blame him at all. Oh, this is an incredibly frustrating lane to play against. The long range harassment all the time, just dropping spirits in your face. And then, of course, Skyrath Mage is Skyrath Mage. He's incredibly frustrating for anybody. Almost anybody. Let's look at this puppy already. So much damage. This is one arcane bolt to the face. Look, it's bang, bang, puppy just getting wrecked here. He's going to throw in the negative armor though. Now, Boogie will have to back off here as he sees Kuroki running, Kuroki running straight at him. Meanwhile, first blood comes out. It's four. What's this? A fascinating substance. What? Well, there we go. First blood there on Valix gets cleaned up there. I'm not sure how he Don't managed to have that me. happen with the refraction. Like we said, S4, one of the best in the business there. I'm not really, honestly, not sure how he managed to do that. Yeah, and he didn't even get a killer rune, like a double damage or a haste or something. We'll just start playing that, but Misery now with the supports. This is going to be a hard lane for him, just getting harassed back here. He's also opened up with one level there in the bash. And Kurokai might, like, he just might be better off just going to the jungle. But at the moment, he doesn't really have a camp to farm as No Tail is jacking one there. He's just going to take that. Meanwhile, mid lane. Puck, his bottle is coming out now, I assume. And Templar Assassins is also on the way as well. There's a refraction going up. I see how the, the, the side blade, so much damage. Could get his kill. Oh, so close. He's trying to find it. Unfortunately, Puck backs off just far enough. Farlex, very close to getting a return kill there. As Puck's now going to race him to the top rune. It's going to be a double damage. This could be awkward here. No, he's deciding to back off there. It's a lot of regeneration there for Puck. Two series of, like, basically, he would regenerate six sips worth the bottle charges. See there, five CS for Doom. It's not been a fun lane for him at all. On the plus side, at the moment, for no tell, he hasn't been attacked just yet. Sol Ring's being picked up for both the ET and the Enigma at this point in time. Misery now, oh, he's out of regen. I think he's gonna have to shuttle some out, but unfortunately the Courier is currently in use, being hogged up here by No-Tail. Poor Kyurokai just like, yes, Boogie, Boogie, that's the tower. Boogie, it's a bit of a <laughs> masochist there. Takes a few hits to the face and cancels his clarity because who needs mana? Now Trixie's just trading hits there. It is pretty hard for Doom to trade hits with Trixie. Trixie, with the Astral Spirit, can just drop that on Doom and instantly just gain a huge damage boost. There's, oh wow, this farming here from No-Tail. Just going to cut down the tree so he can clean his way through this so damn quickly. And also, putting that Midnight Pulse to work. And Templar Assassin, as you can see, despite giving my first blood, he's pretty much neck and neck right now. Puck, bottom line, Doom actually picking off. Uh oh, no, Puck, Puppy, Puppy's in trouble here, tanking a creep by Puppy. Decides he can't get away and decides just to trade as much damage as he can there in the bottom lane. Not lane now, Misery in trouble, the lift is ready to go. Misery, he's got a time walk level 2, he's going to try for the lift now. If he can pick him up and drag him back, they might be able to buy enough time to bring him down. No, Misery will manage to leap away there. Get slowed down the last second by the dagger, but we'll walk away from this alive. I'm out. Now lift is up in the air, he's going to dump him on the high ground. Unfortunately, too far away from the high ground, Jirax won't manage to... Get his shenanigans happening. They're going to lose this card now. Misery going to try and get a bash here. Has actually leveled up one in the bash, two in the leap. But unfortunately, a little bit anemic there. Not able to pick anything off. It's four with a double damage. Valix, no matter right now for the refraction. This could hurt. Uh-oh. Park going to go for it. Does manage to land the, the hit in there with the illusion of might have gone for it. And Faces Void, still no regen. He's struggling a bit here, meanwhile. Kurokai taking some harassment again from the ET. And there we go, concussive shot coming out the stomp as well. They're going to try and set up here now. They're going to close the gap here. And here we go, they're just waiting. Trying to get in range here for Trixie to punch him once or twice. Doesn't happen though, as Doom pops the Scorched Earth and we'll get away. Now Void just stealing the pool there as Jirax has decided actually he wants to do some stacking. The creep do not cooperate there. No tell though, I expected him to come under more pressure here. They decided just to focus on slowing down Doom, which is definitely happening there. 11 and 0 for Doom, definitely not finding all that much farm. 24 and 8 there for the ET. I think not. Now, 
man, that's spirit. Let's see how much damage he's gonna draw back from just hitting those creep and those two heroes. Here's Z. Uh oh, oh Scarth Mage. He brings up 64 damage though. Now Boogie now in trouble getting dragged back in there by the black hole. Should be a freebie here. The secret. Unfortunately, that ward, they're not spotting the rotation from coming from the blind side, essentially. It's no tell walks in there. Should Radiant's be okay, though, because the damage is, is gone. Attack. Oh, she knows he's got 38 damage now. I don't think he wants to dive the tower. Trixie! Trixie is hell-bent on feeding right now! No, he changed his mind there, as he will back off. Now, double traps up for TA. Puck copying some hits there. Sideblade's doing the work. You see, this is the trouble that Puck has. Like, the fact that Puck got that first blood is absolute S4 is just amazing that he managed to pick that up. So you can see, despite dying, TA is up to 28 and 9. She's fought, gotten ahead of the Puck 27 and 7. Despite dying and giving away the first blood. That is actually a really, really amazing play. I don't know how he did it. I guess it, maybe it was just TA got over aggressive and messed up. Void's top lane, 8 and 0, not really finding the farm he wants, but pretty much Void right now. He's just looking to get a good Chronosphere off in the mid game, seeing if they can pick up some kills there. With that, Misery. Oh, nope, just leaps away into the trees further. Did Misery. Matama Man didn't see him. I could have sworn that he would have seen him there. And Misery's just happy to leech experience. He's going to catch up with gold, just getting the assist kills later in the match. Right now. Okay, it's relatively even. I thought it would be worse than that. And Doom is ready to go. So they're going to try and pick off the TA with the Doom, and that's going to chew, even with the fraction up, that's going to chew right through it. I mean, Net and Doom, they should be able to manage this. There's a call to slow things down. Doom comes out, Refraction goes up first, but I think they should be able to get this kill fairly easily. Moving in there. Actually, no, they're going to go up for the return kill on Puck. Puck taking a lot of physical damage there. We'll be healing up, though, on Valix, though. With the support coming in to help him out and chase them off, he will manage to ride through this Doom. Meanwhile, Boogie has opted to just hide in the trees there. Void has uh, gone bottom as well. Void's looking for a pick-off in the bottom line. E.T., though, most of his targets porting into the mid lane there to provide support for the Templar Assassin. Now to the oh, they've found him. He is so, so dead. That's a free kill. Boogie, unfortunately, give me away another freebie there. will be picked My off. Dreams. And I'll let Misery take the last hit on that one to help him catch up. <laughs> now, Jirax, unfortunately, has probably given away that ward position. So you can see the ET. Will he go for a stomp? I don't think he can find the stomp. Kuriko is just going to back off there. Jirax moving in. Slow there. TA's going to get stuck in. Fabol's coming in. This is, oh, no. We'll clip to the heroes there. Spirit going to be drawn back in. They're going to watch for a black. No, it's 30 seconds. Oh, cool down. Angel Spirit gets punched down by the stable gun. In comes Puck. Puck going to take a return kill. Takes two there. And a double kill for No Tail, actually. No Tail taking the last hits. Meanwhile, Jirax in trouble. Kuriko running him down. One more auto attack. We'll chop him down. Four heroes dead for four anchors. Secret, on the other hand, trading two. They will lose their off laner. But I think they're quite happy to take out both the core, the primary farmer, and the solo mid. And unfortunately, the solo <laughs> that just went horribly wrong. Puck got in there with a great burst. Absolutely nailed them. Didn't even need the Chronosphere for that. Templar Assassin, definitely better. In terms of just that laning in the mid lane as well. It's just she's really good for those scrappy fights. But unfortunately, that one, they just grouped up and went for it. He didn't even need to use Coil. That fight, if he got Coil down, that could have been even worse. The Misery heading back up the top lane, 50 seconds. He's probably just going to sit up here, farm for 50 seconds, and then look for another pick off once that ult comes up. Kuroko just going to take some more harassment there. At. Uh, Oh, that actually could be worse. He's actually picked up the healing aura, so he's actually going to be able to sustain through that most likely. The puck. The first blood and all those kills that they're racking up at the moment, he's well ahead in terms of net worth. And it's going to be difficult here. Although it looks like four anchors are going to try and get some objectives down here. Take down the tier one bottom. This is going to make things, you know, this is going to give them access to the jungle. At the same time, meanwhile, mid lane, there goes the core down. They're going to pop the Midnight Pulse down as well. But it's trying to back off Black Hole, dragging him back in. The TP will get cancelled. Realize he's going to TP inside the Black Hole. Cancels out. Void jumping forward. Another TP cancel. They really don't want to get stuck inside the Chronosphere as well. And Forank is cut their losses, which I feel is definitely correct. 
decision Radiant's to make. They'll say, you screw it, let's just get the trade attack. the tier 1 bottom. We'll Dying lose that tier 1 mid, we'll lose the TA as well. But had they continued porting, it would have been worse. They would have just traded away more heroes. Maybe not even have got that Radiant bottom tower as well. Are fortified. Version coming out there. No doubt going to clear this tier 1. They could even just keep pushing attack. on the tier 2 Dyer's mid as well. Four anchors are a little wary. I oh, know they're actually saying... TP in behind the trees. They're going to try and set up a fight. Puck is ready to go. Drinkle's not ready, but he does have a double Radiant's damage rune. Actually, no, it's just wearing off. Attack. He won't have that double damage rune for the fight. They're going to sweep him from behind, Invisibility. maybe. Oh, boy. Void's got an invis. That should be a free kill. The Spirit's going to scout things out for them. Actually, no, they walked over the trap, so they already know that trouble's coming. But the Denai comes out from Puck. He will manage to clean that up. Meanwhile... Denied. Phantom Assassin being left to her own devices for the most part, but she has managed to die once. Denied. Templar Assassin gets jumped in the mid lane there, gets picked off. Now Puck getting chased around by Trixie. Puck actually says four decides he wants to go for it, jumps in with a silence there, but will actually no back off, doesn't jaunt out. And this is getting pretty dangerous for ET at the moment. He's staying in pretty deep. Now they don't have TP support, but at the same time, one bad smoke gang could quite easily get picked up, although they do have some vision down here, Rubik. Although, Secret saw them play- well, they should have seen him place that wall because he placed it while right next to Doom. So I'm surprised that they haven't actually- oh, there we go, they're pinging it, they know it's there. They're saying smoke up, yeah, they're saying smoke up to reveal- oh, wow. Alright, so they reveal themselves, reveal themselves backing off, then smoke up and go for it. And now Boogie. Oh, Boogie's actually hidden in the trees, he might actually get away. Oh, no, he's interrupted the smoke there, Kuroko, though. He's been seen now, and now they know he's coming. Trixie's probably going to get away here. Throws... Okay, throws it out behind him. Trixie decides he wants to stay, and he's probably going to get picked off here. Yeah, I don't think Trixie's getting out of this one alive. Throws out the stop. We'll get silenced up, and Trixie gets picked off there, despite Boogie interrupting the smoke gang. And I mean, it was pretty obvious. He interrupted them as they came across there. Only knocked Kurokai out of it. But still pretty bleeding obvious that the smoke gang was incoming. No tell though, trying to get a deny there. No nope, Phantom Assassin. Radiant's Look at the last hit. In comes Doom. Fallen. Doom. He throws down the stun. Doom's still on cooldown though. So you see the steel there. will be Scorched Earth. That's for now. His Blink Dagger is up and running. It's a four anchors have an issue here. It's going to be the fact that now the blink dagger is up. In fact, they could even go for a blink on Enigma if they wanted to because there aren't that many options to disrupt it. Disrupt this black hole. But now the blink is up. The puck things get really hairy for four anchors. They could even go for one on Doom as well. But the initiation power between the chronosphere and the coil is incredibly powerful. And four anchors don't really have Dyer's much of an answer to it. They're just going to pour out from attack. the top line, just try and dodge these fights, which, fair enough. Four Anchor's plan, game plan here, is going to be to have to dodge these fights. They're going to have to wait for Templar Assassin, as well as Phantom Assassin, to get some farm rolling. And hopefully, Radiant's get them to a stage where they can try and take these head-on fights. But at the moment, they're definitely not ready to do so. But unfortunately, while they're dodging these fights, they're going to be losing towers pretty rapidly. Valak's going to try and trade for a tier Dyer's 1 mid. They have already taken a tier 1 bottom, attack. but they are going to lose their top and most likely. No, the port's coming Dyer's in. Chronosphere's come down. Valak's now in trouble. Ford trying to get some damage in. In comes the Doom. Puck's here as well. The damage can be stacked on Valak. He's going to take another spill. And he's up to 5 deaths now. This is not going particularly well for him. 3k gold advantage now. The blink in there. Uh, gonna swap out there. Nicely done there from Puppy. Will be dragged out again by the Earth Splitter. No tell now trying to give chase. Slow down by the dagger. But Tama Van copying the Malefist to the face there. Now Trixie trying to back up. But Tama though gets in the corner and will be brought down. Unfortunately, going the wrong direction. As Boogie pours in, but it's too late to assist. In what bottom? I see Rubik. I'm sure what Rubik's actually up to down the bottom. It looks like he's attack. actually trying to chase Doom around. I don't think he's going to be able to get much feel. He's trying to snipe crew at the moment. And meanwhile, Boogie, though, pops down a counter ward. We'll try and do some counter ward before he's picked off. Gets Dream caught up. Stomp comes in. As it looks like Jurax did manage to pick off that courier. I'm not sure how they managed to let that happen. Kuroko apparently not paying attention. Meanwhile, back up in the top lane. Steal there from Misery. He picks up Chronosphere. He's got it down. Goes the Vengeful Spirit. Now he manages to pick off the S4 inside the Chronosphere. I don't know if they got the damage. Unfortunately, the wrong side. The lift up. Will it be enough? The damage comes in from the mouth. There we go. S4 picked off. And his streak ended there. Templar Assassin going to take that streak. She'll pick up 918 gold. 
Now, meanwhile, bottom lane, Masked Man is activated. Gonna chase Kuriko around in circles here. They're about as fast as each other. Kuriko, though, possibly in trouble. No, he's got a blink. He will manage to blink out there. Blink's a short distance and TP's out. It's actually a bit of a panic blink there. He blinked into a pathable area. I think he probably tried to get here and just got knocked over. That's a goal for Misery. Probably gonna go for his own Masked Man. That is definitely... A pretty ballsy buy there from Templar Assassin. Like, they want the full-on burst damage to try and knock people down as fast. Like, they need to... I don't... I think it's... The reasoning is sound. They need to kill certain heroes ASAP before the counter CC comes out of secret. Like, they've got to land that burst damage. But at the same time... Yeah, you've picked up a Mask of Madness against a team that can really punish you for activating because they've got so much great CC. And you've got stuff like Doom as well with a Blink Dagger, you're playing against the Blink Puck, it's, it's really quite scary. It's going to take some serious finesse, finesse there from Matumba Man. Now it looks like he's building a Scepter next. S4. He work towards the well. He might just do a Dagon for Burst, especially since he knows that Phantom Assassin is building a Mask of Madness. He could actually just do a Dagon. That would be incredibly painful to have to deal with that. I mean, Radiance bottom tower without a BKB, if Matumba Man activates his... Activates his Mask of Man, it's, it's quite possible to puck his solos in in terms of burst damage. Radiance middle tower is under attack. The Secret gonna make another run here. On the tier 1 tower top, and it looks like again, Foreign is just going to dodge the fighters. Boogie has been sitting here for about the past two minutes. He's been a little bit worried about getting picked off as he Dyer's rotates. Top tower Spirit now chasing mir misery around. Radiance Chrono is up. PPs are coming attack. mid to defend. They could definitely put them to work here. It's Trixie actually going deep, scouting things out. I see it. Oh, time walk out there from misery. Is he actually going for a kill here on Boogie? Boogie might get sold in. Another silence comes down there. Boogie's going to go for a solo kill. Oh no, he whiffs! Yeah. Tries to TP out. I don't think he's getting away. We'll be burst down there. Uh, it's unfortunate. They could have got that kill, but unfortunately, whiffs. The Mystic Flare now. Pa oh, no tell. Actually chasing off Jirax. Jirax having to back off. And Chronosphere's still up. The Faceless Void. They could quite easily repel this push. Looks like they will just pick off the Denier. They will just settle for the Radiance Denier on the mid-tier one. Has been denied. Some man continues to farm the enemy jungle. He's been doing that consistently for a while. But for the moment, four anchors consistently just dodging these fights. Although I say that, and then Jirax is just going to walk into them. Throws down the Chronosphere, gets two, he's stunned up in return. Isn't it really made? Now, there we go. Earth Splitter going to come in combo nicely, but they will pop the mech to heal up there. And right now, it looks like Secret have the attrition to go through. And in comes the four man Chrono for Misery. Landing the goods, Black Hole to follow up. And this is the Wombo combo. Pup joins the fray. And this is going to be a four man wipe. Four anchors just getting Wombo combo down. And that's just it. You group up. And S4, and the rest is secret, they just press R to win. Oh boy. This is the danger that Fire Anchors are running into, and I mean, they look for the pick-offs. They think they have a chance to pick off, but unfortunately, they don't have the damage to dump into that Chronosphere. Without the Scarath Major, who's unfortunately stuck off the mid lane. If they had the uh, Scarath Major, it's highly plausible that they pick off the Enigma. Before he can come out, pop the, uh, the mechanism as Boogie then also dies regardless. Doom also going to take that Aegis there as well. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. So S4, 7, 1, and 6. He is having a great game. Gonna find himself a... We're well, gonna pop his invisibility. See if he decides... Is he just gonna camp? No, he's just... I thought he was gonna camp the bounty rune and wait for one of the supports to come and try and pick it up. And then kill them. But no, he'll just snag the bounty rune for himself. No tail with a four staff. Decides not to get the blink dagger just yet. I mean, he could well, quite well... Justify a blink dagger at this point in time, just because four anchors lack the ability to cancel it reliably. They don't have something like a long range swap to deal with it. And now blink in there for Kurokai's gonna throw out another doom on Trixie. Trixie, I think, is gonna be okay. He's just gonna back off here. Actually, maybe not. That's a level two step to doom. I think he's actually gonna die here. He's gonna need to be denied. Radiance middle tower is under attack. And it's looking like he is gonna need to be denied there. In fact, he's actually outrunning Temple Assassin. Goes to the deny. Easy. Easy with refraction. Kuro's like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. As long as somebody dies, it's all good. I haven't really seen much of an impact here for Phantom Assassin. Unfortunately, she's just spending the fights locked down and blown up.
S4, Yules is done, just going to make him even more elusive and irritating to try and take down. It also gives him an option, a really good answer though, to this Skyrath Mage's silence. Just allows him to get rid of that and bypass it now. Uh, are they going to go for a kill? What are they doing here? Traffic jam in the trees as they block each other off there. Looks like Phantom Assassin. No, she's just using the Mask of Manus to get around faster. She's just going to go and farm the Ancients most likely. Not being stacked for her. Four anchors again, they're just committed. Alright, well, you know what? We can't take these five on five. I mean, it's obvious. They cannot take those five on fives. There's just way Dyer's too many press out of wind skills. Attack. So they're going to split up, try and get their farm, dodge fights. But this may cost them some serious tower gold in a minute. And Trixie as well. It's also going to cost some Trixie. <laughs> Trixie just blown up. Doesn't have a hope in hell there. And yeah, there we go. Tier 2 and under siege. They might be Dyer's able to find a counter kill there on Puppy, but you know attack. what, that's a really cheap support kill, so it wouldn't really mean that much at all. Thumb Man just invading the enemy jungle. They've seen three tops, like, you know what, we can probably afford to farm this area down here, but the TP support is coming in. Puppy moving in, but Thumb Man is walking. Well, actually jump in and reveal himself there. And it looks like Forankers again, they realize the support's coming to defend this tier 2, and they're just going to fade away and avoid fighting. See, Doom. Doom Dyer's is ready. He's looking for potential kill. I mean, he could attack. find this. Actually, no. Port's coming in. Anyway, Boogie. Boogie's very Boogie's dead Boogie's there. Boogie. No way he escapes this one. They can steal their... They stole Doom. He stole Doom in return. Throws it down there. And we'll be well ended up in the air there by the Yules as well. But I don't think he's getting away from this. Stomp down. Should be cleaned up very easily. Trixie gets to look for some revenge. Pops the Aegis down, though. I don't think they've got a follow-up to bring him down a sec time. Meanwhile, down by the river, they will try and take a second kill here. Puck, no, they're going to leap in. Chronosphere comes in. Will they catch one? Matumba men will be to walk away. But Varlix will pay the price for this attempt to bring down S4. Enigma now, 1,300 gold in the bank. And look at this. Doom's <laughs> net worth is huge. Oh, boy. They don't even... I mean, they could go for a refresher on Doom next, but I don't think they even need to. Even Doom just going... For, I think Doom right now will be definitely well served by picking up some armor. The Assault, assault Karas for his team would be fantastic. Just because the meld right now is hit so hard. Not that they had to... Not that they've really been getting pounded by the meld at the moment, but it really does do a lot of damage, so... Assault for his team would really help out. Also, attack speed Void. I don't think if Void's ever complained about a free attack speed aura. Some warding, counter warding being done there. Both teams of the wards can see each other there. But now, secret, they're on the chase. They're going to try and bring down Boogie as well as Jirax. Boogie down to jump into the trees there. He's going to need to TP, like, right now. Like, yesterday, in fact. If he keeps waiting like this, he's going to be in trouble. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Well, actually, no, they're going to go for this kill here. There's the Fae Bolt going to come out. And Malefet's going to go on top of Jirax. Jirax in trouble. Can they get him out of trouble? Four staff might be able to save him. I don't think they've got one, though. Mystic oh, Blade comes in. on top of Puck. Can they get his kill? No, he uses himself. Tosses himself up the air. Rubik's going to go down. In comes the Black Hole. No, cancelled by the Earth Splitter. But I don't think they get a return kill. In fact, Puck, S4, he wants more blood. He's going to give chase here. Dream Coil is still available. Could go for Trixie. Trixie, is he going to TP? No, throws out the stomp. Trying to send everybody to sleep. Will be dodged there by Puck. Ducks back, realizes it's incoming, and gets back. Trixie, on the other hand, will manage to escape and walk away there. But they lose a Rubik. Doom, on the other hand, picked off on the top lane. Solo here by the Tummer Man. GG bashes. RNG G bashes. Does it, show us how many? Oh, it doesn't show us how many procced. Dyer's bottom tower and Doom died with Doom attack. up. That's... <laughs> he must have gotten bashed so freaking hard. Now the harassment coming out there on Misery. Misery gonna get silenced up. Can he go further in? No, we'll be four staffed out there now. The Dream Call comes down from Matama Man. There we go. Midnight Pulse goes down as well. A lot of damage gonna come out there on Matama Man. Tries to slow down Big Daddy. Big Daddy, no tell though. In trouble. Yules up in the air to cancel the TP out. And they're gonna play stacks on on him. Four did die in the meantime. They did manage to run down. Big Daddy now. No tell goes down. And finally, four anchors land. A good series of kills. Two kills there. No losses in returns. Of course, they did. Managed to get those kills without Doom being present. He was already dead. But it is 2,700 gold swing in their favor. Much needed shot in the arm there. I'm just going to pop his runes as well. But as we can see, you know, it's a much needed shot in the arm. But <laughs> barely made a dent there. In secrets, bottom tower gold advantage. Attack. Around about 14,000. Advantage at the moment. Now Trixie just gonna beat on the, they're just gonna beat on this tower. Take the tier two. Radiant actually, surprise they're actually taking fortified. these tier twos. These towers. Radiance bottom tower. But Secret hasn't been returned. I suppose Secret's not particularly good at pushing. Well, they've got the Enigma. You gotta do so much in the face fallen. of getting spammed by astral spirits. A 
see some people complaining about the... This is like Twitch chat. You're on, you're on fire today. Alright, so... The word, well, we've got a lull here. The word Aegis. Dyer's Aegis. Aegis is, is maybe a lot attack. of people like to call it. It's actually pronounced Aegis. I used to also think it was pronounced Aegis. I think Aegis sounds cooler. I think it sounds better. And I used to, like, basically it was a pet peeve. I used to go, Malini? Malini, why do you keep saying this? Why do you keep saying Aegis? Why do you keep saying Eo? And then I actually looked it up, discovered he was pronouncing it right, and like, God damn it. God damn it, stupid sexy Malini. Why are you always right? So as it turns out, despite the fact I may think that Aegis sounds cooler, the correct way is to pronounce it Aegis. So I do that. There's some learning for you. Anyway, back to the game. As we roll on here. Abyssal Blade Time picked up by mighty. Phantom Assassin. Okay, if anything can save the day, it's RNGG crits with an Abyssal Blade. And I mean, they need it. They need to blow up this Doom before it can get down these spells. I mean, I'll preferably also blow up the Void as well if they can. If they can blow up Void before it can Chrono, or preferably, I mean, if Void Chronos, they steal the Chrono, counter Chrono the enemy team, and then blow up the Doom before it can Doom anybody. I think four anchors have a chance, but like I mentioned earlier in the, in the cast, it comes down to, like, four anchors have to play out of their minds in these 5-on-5s, five even when they're getting a lot of farm. But from this position, so, so far beyond, they have to absolutely play out of their minds to have even a hope in hell of winning this match. On the other hand, Secret have a very easy-to-execute lineup, comparatively speaking. It's pretty much doom that guy, throw down Chrono, don't trap teammates, trap some of your opponents, and then Black Hole should do the rest. And Void, you know, right-click on people. It sort of plays itself. It's, it's much more simple <laughs> compared to the amount of work that Rubik is going to have to do. The, you know, the comboing there, he needs to get a Chrono into an Earth Splitter, into basically Templar Assassin, or Templar Assassin and Phantom Assassin blowing up a priority target. It is it is pretty difficult in terms of coordination, but now... Oh, the Smoke Gank is on. They're going to walk into Templar Assassin. She jumps away and into a Dream Core and a Chrono Sphere. Oh, boy. Unfortunately, for Anchor, they just set that one up for failure. That's an easy double kill there for Kurokai. He will pick that one up. Festoon, my I mean, it was a good attempt there for an escape from Phantom Assassin, but ironically, they would have actually been better served if she'd just run in a completely different direction. See the Solon Chrono there comes out. Earth Splitter gonna come through there. We'll land on Kuroko Drown. No, it whiffs! Oh, no, that's the worst feeling in the world. I know it too well. When you miss an easy setup like that. Now, Puppy now in trouble. Should be able to pick this up. No, Puppy healed up by the mech. We'll be okay in the end. And down goes... Oh, Elf of Titan just gets slammed there, and that's a five man wipe. Four anchors will fall, take nothing in return, and Secret are all over their base. They're going to clean up a tier two here, maybe even a tier three as well. This tier two mid, it's not long for life, it will be cleaned up very quickly. The Eilon's already working on it, and yeah, they, I think they can pick up a tier three. Oh, maybe not actually, they do have Glyph up. But, uh, lots of pings going. I think they're. It looks like four anchors think. Dyer's that there's an enemy ward in there, but it was just attack. pure bad luck. That Matamba Man walked in that smoke gank the moment he did. Are fortified. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Kuroko though, currently sitting on... Oh boy, there's the Shiva's picked up. I mean, his team could have well done with the Socrates, but unfortunately... Well, you know what? You know what? It's fine. Shiva's actually really, really good on Doom. And it's also... It's actually really going to impact the Templar Assassin quite heavily as well. Templar Assassin is not uh, sort of agility... It's not sort of agility here. It normally builds on a lot of attack speed, so that negative... Effect on her is going to be fairly well compounded. Now, Puppy, though, going to go for a kill here. Puppy, though, in trouble. In comes the Abyssal Blade on top of Misery. Misery in a lot of trouble here. We'll pop the BKB. Now he's going to go on Boogie. He decides to bring him down there. Now, will he stay, though? Will he back off? In comes the Earth Blade. He will have to back off there, but he's still in potential trouble there. He's waiting for the time link to come, and we'll zip away there. Unfortunately, oh, no, wait a minute. Trixie actually surrounded by opponents here. Jirax now in trouble. We'll be caught up here. I don't think Jirax is going to manage to get through. Picks up S4, tosses down. Doesn't land on any opponents here. In comes Matama Man into a black hole. Oh, Matama Man's in trouble. As Misery now going to get to work on Matama Man. Will he manage to basically... Will he get away with this? It looks like the evasion will come through here. Is now no talent trouble. He's going to get bashed up there by the Abyssal Blade. And they will manage to pick him off along with the Void. And RNGG works in Four Anchor's favor. And the Doom comes in. Oh, Bugs, Bugs in trouble here. S4 though decides he's not done. We'll bring down Bugs. 
as he shifts away there with the Aether Rule. John now, Kurokai in trouble. He's getting jumped on here. Oh no, Matama Man. Well, he's, Matama Man's going for it. His Doom's not there anymore. Let's go for it. Stomp comes out. We'll miss. But the Yule's there from S4. No, counter Yule's now. Will he get away? He's got jaunt up. No, phase shifts, but he's still in a lot of trouble here. Into it. Oh, <laughs> no armor and a 1k crit there. Down goes Puck. To be chosen for death. Pays for his aggression. He does manage to get Kurokai out of trouble, though, with that Yule's. And how much money is Phantom Assassin sitting on now? 3.2k. I mean, these scrappy fights are okay for four anchors. If they can keep just, they avoid the five on fives, they're actually going to hopefully be okay. Like we saw there, like it's a two man chrono, a one man black hole. That kind of stuff they can handle as Doom actually just goes up and solves all the Titan. That kind of stuff they can handle. Double Venom Assassin damage. Assassin up a double damage. Oh boy. Gonna be able to cleave through that pretty damn quickly. And it looks like Secret don't actually know this is happening. In fact, they probably wouldn't expect it to be happening. Some man has the advantage of having this double damage rune here. I don't think anybody's gonna go and check either. No team, in fact, having really any good vision. The Roshan pit at the moment. So, Vorank is kind of flying blind yet. There we go. They've got a ward Roshan down now. Has fallen to the dire. Man, Assassin gonna get that second life there. She's Probably actually going to have to go back to base and get some mana. Phantom Assassin is definitely reliant on her spells to make sure she keeps dealing that damage. It's four now. He's got the... Oh, the Aghanim's there. And that's going to be a rough one for Phantom Assassin to deal with. She's definitely vulnerable to getting picked up by that and then snapped by the swap. We mentioned this earlier at the very start of the cast. The swap with Puck is so damn good when he's got that Aghanim Scepter. You can just guarantee that really good start. And they can drag the Templar Assassin or the Phantom Assassin out of position and just focus fire them down. Preferably probably the Phantom Assassin. They go for the Templar Assassin. Phantom Assassin is going to jump in afterwards. I suppose if she jumps in afterwards, then that's just a two-man chrono waiting to happen. And the priority hero is being chronoed as well, so... Let's see. Elemental gold. And Puck... Uh, is he going for a refresher? Could be. A double coil is really good, actually. Except, and now Kurokai in trouble. Will be bashed up there. Abyssal Blade trigger will go on top. Kurokai just gets obliterated. No armor for him, pretty much. Actually, no base armor. Actually, no, he's got plenty of armor there from the Sheevers. But still, crippling blow they dealt to him. And Tama Man, Puppy now possibly in trouble. Going to go for no doubt. Doesn't get a bash off. Meanwhile, counter stun thrown out by Puppy. But he's surrounded. Will be brought down. Vorank is swarming around him like a band of sharks. And secret, the rest of Secret just cutting the losses and TPing out. Misery will go back to farm the jungle, and they already managed to get No Tail out of trouble, which is good considering he's carrying the gem there. As, wait, what? I'm gonna assume that uh, a dagger followed him home. That was a little bit weird. Just had his Lincolns triggered. Now the dagger tossed in there. Misery actually gonna BKB there. That's a very sort of chickenish. <laughs> he didn't really need to BKB, attack. but he did. Someone called Chicken, but you know what? Better safe than sorry, because they have lost to Doom already. Doom doesn't have buyback, so yeah. Better to stay safe, fortified. but unfortunately, when Doom comes up, he's not going to have the BKB for Void, and it's highly possible that Void actually gets Radiant's silenced up now without that BKB. If he attack. jumps in, if he jumps in and they're precasting Ancient Seal on him, he Radiant's will get picked off. Tower has fallen. Now, all of a sudden, Vorank is in a good position with just those pickoffs, those scrappy fights. Like, Secret's sort of walking in the enemy jungle by themselves one by one. Doom goes in by himself, gets picked off immediately by E.T. and Phantom Assassin. It's just those sort of one-by-one -one fights that four anchors can still take, but the five-on-five five is still easily in Secret's favor. Illusion. But as long as they can dodge the five-on-fives and take those scrappy fights, they're going to be hopefully okay. So they drag it back a little bit, around about probably a 13,000 gold deficit for four anchors at the moment. Blink forward there from Doom. Misery, though. Probably building a Monkey King Bard to try and help deal. With the evasion, in fact, if they really want to... I'm surprised, actually, Puck is not working. I mean, Double Coil is amazing, don't get me wrong. It is insanely good. But at the same time, like, one of the issues they have right now is they can't get the DPS onto Phantomus. And although they don't, you know, I take it back. They've got Doom. They've got Aghanim's Doom. They can shut down the passive. So, no, that's actually not an issue. So, yeah, Puck can just go for Double Coil. Very easily. Now, Varlix has got to be careful. He might walk in a three or four. He spots them up, though, with a trap. And he knows they're there now. Jim will also spot that trap, and they'll just walk away from it now. Wow, but Tama Man going deep, though. He's got the... Uh, no, he decides not. He's just going to go shopping, and we'll back off. Scotty up for him as well now, though. It's going to help 
deal with being kited. In fact, he's going to make very hard to do. And also just tanks him up. Makes him a brutal tank at the moment. 2400 health plus life lifesteal. Unfortunately, I mean, he might actually decide to trade out the Mask of Madness later for a Satanic. The Satanic will really help out a lot. Although, actually, no, maybe not, because he can't use the Satanic effectively when he's being probably going to get targeted by Doom. And it's Refresher Doom too, so it's almost guaranteed there's going to be a Doom up at all times. This Sword, though, doing some really strong work. They're watching four anchors. They know exactly where they're standing. Like, you can see Trixie in the trees there. They know he's skulking. And Secret. A secret warrior, they're spreading out. Radiance Doom, top disjointing tower that dagger there. Attack. Playing risky right now with the Tum Man. Gonna have to... You know what? No, it's not too bad. They're just gonna use the illusion there to push as well. They've got the second life, and he's gonna be just top fine. Tower has fallen. He's just still ready to go. I don't think it's... What's it got? It's got a fair, fair while left. Puck now gonna jump forwards there, but... Four anchors are long gone. Blink Dagger. Rubik's actually managed to find enough farm to get a Blink Dagger. The mobility on Rubik is amazing. Like some of the best spells you can steal for Rubik are mobility based Double spells. Motel just doing some counter warding. He's taking out the Dire Ward at top. They have one in the lane as well, nearby the Radiant one. He's taking that out there with the gem. Oh no, Aegis is actually gone now. Come man, didn't really find any good use for that. He can't really buy up them. He's got a safer ball. I say that, but at the same time, he's so far behind, I don't actually think he can afford to save a buyback. Like, he sort of gets to a point where, yeah, you should have buyback, but at the same time, when you fall far enough behind and you're really relying on a carry to save the day, it comes to the point where they just have to basically pray to, pray to God that they don't die and just buy up to make sure they're relevant in the fights and they can kill people. Because if you're too underfarmed to fight effectively, okay, so you've got buyback. You die once, okay, because you couldn't fight them, and then you buy back, and then you die a second time, because you still can't fight them, because you don't have the items to do it with. So I think, actually, in this case, I mean, when you're over 10,000 gold behind, it's probably about time that your carries just go screw it and start buying up. Yeah, between Meld and this Desolator, this is definitely attack. a problem for Doom, as Elder Titan just gets picked off from the top line, and just gets jumped. Trixie, unfortunately, mugged. But yeah, Doom is going to struggle a bit. There's a lot of negative gamma coming out of the Desolator. Dyer's top tower is and the Meld under hits attack. is, do they have an AC Radiance as well? No, they don't. They could do it with attack. an AC. AC would be really nice. Because at the moment, Dyer's it doesn't appear that anybody on Secret is actually buying one. As it looks like Secret are happy to let this go for the moment. Valley's just plowing through this tower. The negative armor really doing some solid work there. They're going to back up though. They don't want to get stuck in. They know the 5-on-5 five five engagement here from Secret is incredibly strong. Four anchors will just do the chip down and say, Alright, well, we got a lot of damage in. Let's just fade away. They lose their tier 2 top, but looks like they're okay with it. As Kurokai does pick up the travels there. Puppy. Oh, he could walk into this, but it looks like they're not. Four anchors decide not to pursue that. They don't want to make any risky plays, especially not just for Puppy. Now, if it was Doom or someone important, yeah, that's another story. They might have made a play for that. But when they can't see real, they don't have good vision of the dire side of the forest. As, uh oh. That looks like, yeah. We're disconnect from the server. And. I think we're back. We're not back. Well, this is awkward. Now, hopefully no fights breaking out. I'm just going to try and reconnect. We were having issues with the server earlier. Trying to get in the first time around. But yeah, Secret still have that huge 5-on-5 five five advantage. And the refreshes are starting to come up now as well. I mean, Void could even justify. If he can pick up the MKB as well, he could quite easily justify going refresher or even just... He doesn't really need a step to just a refresher. Oh, no, he's going to need the step to actually power the refresher. So, yeah. As... Ugh. Jeez, I hope I can get back in the server. My Twitch stream go down. What's going on here? No, we're still live or not. I've lost connection to Steam. I'm to connect to the internet. Great. Okay. All right. 